Join us for a tour of the 47th U.S. state we've explored together in a camper. There are tenderloin sandwiches as big as your head, scenic camping spots, colorful tulips, roasted chicken, farm toys, and a few other gems along the way. Joe and I are about to cross into Iowa. It's one of the states we have not RV'd in and we're looking forward to checking it out. Thank you all so much for your recommendations. Kate and I drove over the mighty Mississippi River from Illinois into Iowa and soon after we were greeted by signs for the I-80 truck stop. Of course, we had to pull off the interstate to check it out for ourselves. I'm kind of excited. Should be fun. It's supposed to be multiple stories of a bunch of stuff in there. There's even a museum around here. The main entrance has several fun facts worth reading. Did you know the average long haul truck driver drives 100,000 miles per year? This multi-level building has plenty of souvenirs, a restaurant, vehicle displays, theater, barber, and even a dentist. My favorite section was dedicated to truck parts. Lights anyone? Oh, and let's not gloss over the build your own axle cover section. I feel like we should upgrade Leo's horn. I'm game. <laughs> we walked back over to the trucking museum, but unfortunately it was closed. So I went back, made a cup of coffee, then we got on the road and headed west towards Des Moines. The rain led up long enough for us to stop and check out the Herbert Hoover National Historic Site in West Branch. This 187-acre site shares the story of the 31st President of the United States. The historic site includes the cottage that the Hoovers lived in with two adults and three children. There is also a reconstructed blacksmith's shop similar to the one that President Hoover's father owned. The park is meant to represent what an Iowa small town in the 1870s and 80s looked and felt like. After our introduction to the life of the 31st president, we continued to Des Moines to spend a few nights driveway surfing with friends. This is Jason and Emma Walsmith. They are friends of ours who live in Des Moines, Iowa. Mm -hmm. And where are we going today? We're gonna go to a place called Bacon, Bacon, Bacon which is a restaurant. It's a Jethro's restaurant. There's a few Jethro's around here. And uh, we're gonna get you a pork tenderloin. Yeah, man. How can you go wrong with bacon, <laughs> bacon, bacon? Maybe a bacon appetizer. <laughs> Although there were many tempting items on the menu, we were there for one reason and one reason only, to experience Iowa's favorite way to eat pork and of course, have some bacon. If you've never seen a giant pork tenderloin sandwich in person, it can be quite a shock. This fried piece of pork is about the size of my head, and according to the Walsmiths, the way to eat it is with some pickles and onions, and of course, just a light drizzle of ketchup. Apparently, everyone develops their own style when it comes to eating these pork tenderloin sandwiches, and I prefer to work my way towards the bun. I'm sufficiently stuffed. That was delicious. <laughs> I heard there is a tenderloin trail in Iowa, so we may need to come back, hook up with Jason and Emma, and just do the trail. We enjoyed hanging with the Walsmiths and reminiscing about our recent trip to Muscle Shoals, Alabama. Emma and Jason had invited us to fame for the recording of Jason's song, Camper Van. The folks who are coming together and living this van life community are truly some of the best people we've ever met and I wrote this song for them. Check out the music video and mini documentary over on the Storyteller Network channel. We were also joined by some of the talented musicians from Storyteller Overland. There's Jeffrey playing the guitar, Ruha on drums, and Matt playing the bass. As we said goodbye to Emma and Jason, they sent us off with some music for the road and we continued our tour of Iowa. Timing couldn't have been more perfect as the Tulip Festival in Pella was in full swing when we rolled in. Kate was beyond excited to see all of the tulips in bloom and learn about the different varieties that neither of us had ever heard of. Although blooming flowers aren't really my thing, I had a good time walking around the Dutch town with Kate and checking out the various activities going on. 
Kate managed to find an artisan bakery and we picked up a loaf of cranberry walnut bread for the stroll around town. The tulips could be seen everywhere around Pella, including the many manicured parks and at the Tuttle Cabin. This building was constructed from native walnut timber in the 1840s. One thing we discovered while driving around Iowa is the roads are quite bumpy, as you can see from the way Chewy's head is bobbing on our dashboard. Kate found a campground in Center Junction where we snagged a great primitive campsite on a hill with no neighbors in sight. With the sun shining and temperatures in the mid 60s, it was the perfect spot to catch up on some work, unwind and enjoy the views and sounds of nature. The next day, Kate was eager to get on the road towards Dubuque because there was a stop she wanted to make along the way. To my surprise, the GPS took us to the National Farm Toy Museum in Dyersville. I was pretty skeptical when Kate told me we were going to tour the museum, but once I saw the different farm toys, it immediately brought back memories of the ones I used to play with as a kid. There's a lot to see and read at the museum. We spent a good two hours checking out both floors filled with various exhibits. There were rows of old collectible farm toys, a section dedicated to handcrafted toys made from wood, and international farm toys from countries such as Brazil, Great Britain, and Italy. It was hard not to leave the farm museum without taking home a farm toy. As the t-shirt says, you can't have just one, and we don't have room for any in our tiny camper. Next stop, Mines of Spain State Recreation Area. So what's here? Overlook of the Mississippi River. Ah. See, Kate doesn't always tell me what we're going to go see. She just pops it onto the GPS and I drive us there. Mm-hmm. Surprise! Fair warning, there will be more overlook views of the Mississippi River before our Iowa road trip is over. I did get a heads up for the next stop since it involved planning out my meals for the day. Oh yes, it was food related and this place is Iowa's oldest restaurant and bar and winner of the James Beard America's Classics Award. Brightbox Country Dining in Sherrill opened in 1852, making it the oldest bar and restaurant in Iowa. I ordered the beer battered pork tenderloin sandwich with a side of chicken thighs cooked in one of the two dedicated broaster pressure fryers at the restaurant. I can't believe it's taken me this many years to discover broasted chicken. Now let's get back to the tenderloin sandwich for a moment. Iowa's tenderloin trail is a real thing. Just ask the Iowa Pork Producers Association. Last I checked, there are 14 stops along the trail and this spot is one of them. If the rest are as good as the last two sandwiches I've tried so far, I have at least 13 more reasons to revisit Iowa. Kate and I went on a short walk from the restaurant to the scenic overlook to take in the views and read the interpretive signs, which includes a brief history about Brightbox Country Dining. With more rain on the horizon, we drove to a nearby campground and got set up for the night. We woke up to a beautiful sunny day and enjoyed a morning stroll to the Mississippi River. With no cell service and it being Mother's Day, we got back on the road and pulled over at a scenic overlook to call our moms. I just called to wish you Happy Mother's Day. Well, thank you. Do you look handsome? Yeah, you do. You're like getting better looking as you get older. Baby. Yeah, you are. And you're better looking. Thanks, Mom. It's got to be the Mississippi River in the background or those tenderloin sandwiches working their magic. These are quite the falls. Amazing. Never seen anything like them. Just kidding. That was a fun little hike. I'm out of shape. Just got to keep doing more of these. That's all those tenderloin sandwiches. <laughs> a 
We worked off more of last night's dinner exploring the trails at Effigy Mounds National Monument and learned about the Indian ancestors that are buried here. Some of the mounds overlook the mighty Mississippi that separates Iowa and Wisconsin. We got on Highway 76 and took that all the way to Decorah. Several friends told us to check out Toppling Goliath, so we popped in for a beer flight. Cheers. Stop taking pictures of my beer. Since Kate likes to check out the local food selection in these small towns, we parked our truck camper in downtown Decorah and walked to the food co-op. I don't recall what Kate bought, but I found what I was looking for. I have the essentials, bread, peanut butter, and beer. <laughs> With this being our last night in Iowa, we found a campground on the way to Minnesota. Kate and I really enjoyed all of the campgrounds in Iowa. They are well-maintained, reasonably priced, and some are even free. Seems like a really cool campground. Yeah, very nice, very quiet. We're gonna be parked right along the river in a tent site with no electricity. That is the great thing about being completely self-sufficient with your uh, camper. Being a Sunday, most campers were already gone and we had the tent area all to ourselves. I walked down to scope out a good spot to put out our camping chairs and enjoy the rest of our evening relaxing by the water. Kate and I loved our brief tour of Iowa and were treated to another beautiful sunny morning. We hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and don't forget to check out wertherussos.com for more content and travel guides. See you next time.